Here is what I'll focus on to prepare for paper three in A-level physics. The first one of these will be really difficult. I know that it's tempting to think about how you did in previous papers, but we should place our focus on where it matters and that is preparation on paper three. Even if the paper was really difficult, for instance, the recent AQA paper two, just remember that everyone that I've spoken to has found this paper very, very difficult. The grade boundaries are very likely to reflect this and you will be okay. Don't let a single paper destroy your confidence in A-level physics. So how should we actually prepare? First of all, we need to schedule in a time to do all the previous paper threes from the exam board. They'll be readily available at Physics and Maths Tutor. If you have solved all of these, I really recommend the AS paper twos from your exam board. These will typically have a similar style of questioning and maybe even some ideas that might potentially be retested. If you need some extra help, next weekend on Saturday and Sunday, I will be running some last minute sessions. AQA is Saturday and then OCR is Sunday. I'll leave a link in the description. One of the things that is almost guaranteed to appear is uncertainties. Make sure that we're certain about the uncertainties. For instance, know all the rules for combining uncertainties and be ready to apply them. Please note that in some questions, you may get a quantity that's raised to a power and if that's the case the percentage uncertainty is equal to the power multiplied by the percentage uncertainty of that quantity individually. Also remember that the significant figures in the uncertainties are independent from the significant figures of the actual data. And if a question is asking us to represent the answer to the appropriate number of significant figures, this means that they would test whether we know this. Be confident in dealing with error bars. Remember that the length of an error bar is actually twice the absolute uncertainty in a quantity and it represents the region where the data point is bound to be. Whenever we see a question with error bars, chances are that they'll probably ask us about the line of worst fit and line of best fit. Remember, the rule is that if we need to draw the line of worst fit, we can go from the bottom of the bottom error bar to the top of the top error bar. The reverse is also possible, so there are two options. If the line of worst fit appears in a question, chances are that they're probably going to ask us about the percentage uncertainty in the gradient or the intercept. And we can use these rules that we need to remember for the exam. They're not given in the formula booklet. To find the uncertainty in a data set, what we need to do is use the rule that the absolute uncertainty in that quantity is equal to half of the range. And we could represent the quantity by the mean value plus or minus half the range, which is the absolute uncertainty. If we needed to, we could also find the percentage uncertainty in that as well. Occasionally, we may need to find the uncertainty in a non-standard function. For instance, ln of a quantity or the sine of an angle. And if that's the case, we also need to use the fact that the absolute uncertainty is equal to the range over two. For instance, if we had to find the uncertainty in the natural log of some voltage, we could find the the maximum possible value the voltage could be, take away the minimum possible value that the voltage could be, ln of all of these quantities divided by two, and this represents half of the range of the function, which will be the absolute uncertainty. In paper three, you're very likely to get some y is equal to mx plus c linear analysis. Be prepared to come across an equation that you've never seen before or you've rarely seen before. For instance, this here is the terminal velocity equation in terms of its viscosity. If we had to do y equals mx plus c analysis to rearrange to figure out the viscosity, we could plot a graph with v on the y-axis against r squared on the x-axis, and then we could rearrange our equation for the gradient to work out the viscosity. Understand all these standard experiments that you have done in the laboratory, but also be prepared for some variations of them. 
Talking about experiments in six markers, if you are asked to describe an experiment, be very clear and always write down the sentence what you're going to vary, what you're going to measure, and if something needs to remain constant, make sure to mention that too. You can also provide a method for varying something. For instance, if you needed to vary the speed of an object, you could have it on an inclined plane and then vary the angle incrementally, which will incrementally vary the speed of impact. If you get an oscilloscope question, remember that the y-axis, the amplitude of the signal, represents voltage and then the x-axis of an oscilloscope represents time. To work out the time period, figure out your peak-to-peak -peak distance and then multiply this by your time base. And this would need to go into the description of your calculation in a six marker. It is vital to put these tips into practice and this is precisely why you must watch this video on a collaboration I did with Physics Online that will really help you apply tips in practice right over here.